So previously I did a pure Magic Spectre build here on the channel, but I was thinking to myself that the Draco Slayer build can actually be really powerful as well. And so for that reason, I want to show you guys a Draco Slayer Magic Spectre build that can be competitive in today's format. All of the combos are essentially just one card combos and you can set up some insane locks. So with that being said, I want to show you guys what the deck looks like and how it functions. So let's get right into the video. So to get started with the main deck, we are playing three Bambuku. It is the most important normal summon of your deck. This card is absolutely insane. It plus any other card in hand. So it's a 1.5 card combo ends on pretty much four disruptions and follow up, which is really insane. If you guys don't know essentially what this deck wants to do is it kind of wants to play in the mid range style where you're kind of setting up a board with three to four disruptions. Once you're setting that up, you're setting up the follow up as well. So that on turn three, when it comes back to you, you're able to push and go for game and kind of end a lot of the games that way. And Bambuku is of course the most important card to do that. So of course three bambuku we're also playing three of the brand new magic spectre porcupine this card is absolutely insane as well it's an extender for you which is really important but on top of that it actually gets you spell cards back from your graveyard which is really nice because it helps you recycle a lot of your most important spells but unfortunately it doesn't get you to the traps if it did it would be absolutely insane but it does get you to the spells and some of the best cards in your deck are your spell cards so of course three porcupine as well we're on three yada of course the reason we're on three yada is because yada is going to get you to your spell cards as well so the thing is a lot of this deck you guys are going to see is consistency this entire deck is just built off of how consistent it is and again if you're going first you're pretty much setting up a board that can put up three to four disruptions and then you want to be able to otk and win the game on the turn three right and these cards essentially help you do that so that's why we're on three of the crow then we're on one qb qb the fox actually lets you get to your traps but again the traps are not as important with this build because you're always going to be able to get to at least one of your traps so the one qb is important the spell cards are more important with this build right so that's why we're kind of maxing out on the yada we're only playing the one qb and we're also playing the one ogama now the reason we're on one ogama is because ogama gets you to a spell or trap and that's really important important because technically he can be your second name of fox if you really need that extra trap but it gets you to a spell as well now the reason we're playing these ratios is because you guys can see we're playing the fives and we're playing the twos as much and as even as possible and the reason for that is because we need to have the appropriate scales of course we have more fives here you guys are going to see but there is another low scale that you guys are going to see in this deck as well so don't worry too much about that right now but this is why it's really important because you need to have your twos and your fives and the link to of course gets that for you so again consistency is key now for the rest of the magic specter cards we are playing three magic specter to win magic vector win is absolutely insane because when it tributes it can actually special summon from your deck however one thing that people don't pay attention to is that you don't actually have to tribute a card to special summon this can be just a monster reborn if you're using it's just a quick effect right without tributing a card and that's really good because it does set you up for follow-up especially once you make your ixies plays these cards will go to the graveyard and now getting them back with your wind is really powerful as well so three magic vector wind one cyclone cyclone is really important as well as just some removal i know some people like to play storm i don't like to personally play storm because it's not a quick play so it's not actually setting up disruption it's kind of like good going second but you really want to focus this deck on going first and the consistency and that's why cyclone is good because even if you draw this you can set this and then use it as a form of disruption of course right so one cyclone we're also one tornado and one tempest you're only on one and one of the traps because you actually don't really want to hard draw them they're cards that you want to just search midway through your combo because when you're ending on these it's really powerful but when you draw into them it becomes a little bit more bricky because your combo is supposed to search you into them and if you draw them then you essentially what are you searching it right like that's the whole point you, you essentially draw cards cards you want to search and that's not a good thing so while these cards are really good you don't want to actually draw them so that's why we're just playing the one-on-one -on -one. Then of course we are playing the Draco Slayer package. So we are playing three of the Majesty Pegasus. This is also the other scale two that I was talking about earlier because the scale two and scale five, this is a scale two for you, which is really nice. And it always counts as a Magic Spectre card, which is absolutely insane. This card you always wanna get off your combo as well because it gets you to a field spell and it's one of the best disruptions in the game right now. And I'll get into it soon, but I just wanna say that this card is absolutely insane for the deck and what it's able to set up for the deck. On top of that, the uh, Draco Slayer cards here are all just really good extenders. Not only are they good going first, just getting extra bodies onto your side of the field but they're also really good going second because something like luster is going to give you access to ignister and ignister is a really good card going second and you're able to break boards that way or if you're going on your turn three follow-up like i was mentioning earlier ignister does help you otk and push for damage so that's why we're playing this draco package over here these draco slayer cards are absolutely insane and i think very mandatory for the deck to compete as highly as possible now i will say lastly the reason we're on three majesty pegasus is because this is a magic specter card so it's essentially three more magic specter names which is really important and it's a wind spellcaster which means you can use it for all of your spells and your traps as well 
So for the field spells, we're on Majesty's Pegasus as well as Secret Village. These are the two cards you want to be playing in your main deck. Secret Village is a card that you always want to end on. This card is absolutely insane. This card on its own locks your opponent from using spell cards completely, and that is absolutely insane in today's format. Imagine being able to set up a board with two, three disruptions, plus they're not able to use spell cards. So not only are you setting up the disruptions, now they're not able to use the spell cards to break through your disruption. So this card, absolutely insane, very mandatory. Majesty's Pegasus is really good as well. This is kind of like an extender for you as well so majesty's pegasus again like i said going into turns three this card becomes really good because it's an extender it boosts your monster's attack and you're able to otk with it so that's why we're playing the one and the one i wouldn't play more i'm playing one in the side deck that i'll talk about later but these two are very important in the main deck now for the last stretch of cards over here we're on two prosperity one called by the grave two cross out i'm going to explain all this in just a second but we're on two cross out two drone lockbird two ash blossom three Veiler and three Imperm. These are our ratios over here to end off the 40 card main deck. And I'm going to explain it to you guys in just a moment. So Prod of Prosperity, of course, absolutely insane card. The reason we're on two and not three is because this deck is already very consistent. It kind of just does help you when you do have either the not the most optimal hands or your opponent opens up multiple hand traps. And that's why Prosperity is really good. But the reason we're on two of Drool and Ash is because we all know we're in a fire format right now. And Ash is not super great into the fire format. However, Ash is the one card that actually hurts this deck and it does so in multiple ways so if you guys don't know the magic specter main deck monsters cannot be targeted by card effect why is that good well a lot of people are playing imperm and veiler in their main decks and you're never gonna have to worry about bambuku getting hit with an imperm or veiler and that is absolutely insane however if your bambuku gets hit with an ash that's a different story so that's why we're playing ash with the cross out because you really need your combos to start going through you don't want to have to open five pendulum monsters to do anything you really want to open up a mix of hand traps and monsters here and so for that reason having the cross out i think is really important now cross also is also not just good for the hand traps but it's also really good because you can hit cards like power prosperity if my opponent goes prosp and i cross out the prosp let's say there's nothing else to cross out then you're stopping a lot of their consistency as well so i really like this ratio over here same thing with drone lockbird drone lockbird is a spellcaster wind funny enough which is kind of cool because if you open this with wind and you let's say you open no monsters you can normal summon this tribute it for wind it's, it's kind of cool never really comes up but drone lockbird is another card that hurts this deck very much because it searches a lot and it's one of those cards again that doesn't target your magic specter monsters so for that reason cross out for drone is really good but then you guys might be wondering cross out for imperm and veiler doesn't really make a lot of sense does it well that is actually very uh controversial as well so while the main deck magic specter monsters can't be targeted by card effects unfortunately the brand new link to nui can and this is the only card in the deck essentially that can get hit with a veiler or an imperm and this is where all of your combos start and this is how all your combos get going so for that reason while you're protecting your bambuku and stuff from ash you also need to protect him from the veilers and imperm because if anyone knows how this deck works they'll just hold these cards until this guy hits the field they stop this guy and they stop a lot of your combos right so that's why crossout is really good because you're crossing out all of these cards these cards and these cards as well so that's why i really like crossout in this deck and i think it just makes a lot of sense so for the extra deck over here of course we're on two of the brand new orthros nui this card is absolutely insane we're only on two you don't really need the third because essentially by the time you're making the second one you're going to be able to otk and push for a lot of damage anyway so you only ever really need the two same thing with rui over here rui is a card that you can actually sometimes end on two of these as part of your end board you never really want to do that in my opinion you never really want to do that but you can play two of these i think two is all you need as well we're also playing the one magister paladin magister paladin is of course really good because you're playing the draco slayer engine so you could in theory cut this for one more of these but i really like this card here so so that's why we're playing it and then of course we're playing the beyond the pendulum exceed the pendulum just really good utility cards over here that you can make in pendulum selene of course all your monsters are spellcasters this helps you get into access code which also helps you otk so this is another otk option for you which is really nice apollosa again a lot of these cards are filler and you won't really make them this card is really good in open game states but i will say this this deck is very honestly cheap and affordable and sp isn't and if you guys are looking for a budget option for a deck just cut this play unicorn instead because you can go ip into unicorn it's not the end of the world you don't actually have to go into sp this is kind of the most expensive card in the deck same thing with access code you can easily get away with playing something like boral sword maybe you wouldn't play the ceiling at that point but definitely you can get rid of this if you want a more budget option however access code and sp of course are really powerful again you don't have them that's fine completely replaceable we're playing the one ignister the one dinoster and then the one dweller to round this off these are i think this is actually just the perfect extra deck in my opinion it covers a little bit of everything at the end of the day this card is really good into fire right now and that's kind of why you're playing it because instead of ending on two of these you can end on this plus this and that becomes really powerful in today's format as well this kind of helps you push for game and do a lot of otk plays same thing with the access code etc etc so essentially like i said you want to set up a combo three to four disruptions with the secret village set up and then you're going to be able to otk on the follow-up 
Lastly, for the side deck, I always want to say side decks are always going to be up to personal preference. This is just a skeleton that I want to show you guys what you guys can be playing. But of course, keep in mind, if you're taking this deck to locals, if your locals is all fire players, make sure you side more for fire. If your locals is a bunch of labyrinth players, make sure to side for that as well. So I just want to show you guys a skeleton that covers a little bit of everything. Of course, we're on three Nibiru. Nibiru is really powerful in today's format. Of course, this card is really good into a lot of the fire matchups. And you're not too worried about the token being too big because you do have something like Cyclone, which is searchable that can pop the card. And then you have other ways of removal as well. So three Nibiru, very, very powerful two bell and two crow the reason i'm on two and two is not just three bell is while bell is really good into the fire matchup unlike a lot of other decks because you're playing a pendulum deck bell is actually not that good for protecting you usually bell is really good in multi-purpose one it disrupts your opponent but two it protects your graveyard however you don't really need to protect your graveyard that much so bell is not as powerful in this deck however dd crow is a very powerful card as well so just some uh, graveyard hate that's really good into today's format then we're playing the one harpies as well as the three cosmic cyclone these are just the back row hate cards that i'm choosing to play cosmic cyclone is really good because if you you do end up playing someone who sides anti-spell that could be pretty detrimental of course you're playing a pendulum deck so cosmic cyclone is really good into that but cosmic cyclone in today's format is just really good in general being able to hit the field spell for fire king being able to just hit a lot of the backward decks as well so three cosmic cyclone harpy's feather duster the last field spell that we're playing that i was talking about is necro valley this card is essentially like dweller that's absolutely insane in today's format it's good into the orcus matchups good into the fire king matchups good into the horus matchups there are so many matchups that this is just really good into so necro valley is one of those cards that you can get into very easily with your majesty pegasus and it's a really easy card that you can side into you can either take out a field spell you can even keep all the field spells in inside this and it's good going first good going second so three necro valley and then when you are going first in games three games two solemn judgment is really powerful as well because it stops a lot of the blowout cards again this is just a skeleton for you guys to use however i think it just covers a little bit of everything so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my Draco Slayer Magic Spectre deck profile. And why this deck is so powerful is because if you're just opening a single card, you can have full combos. Now, if you open two cards as well, you still have full combo. There's so many different ways to combo in this deck. And it's a really good mid-range style deck in today's format that can compete, especially because all the Magic Spectre cards can essentially not be targeted, which is really, really powerful. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload seven days a week here on the channel. You guys get five Five shorts, two videos, just like this one. You guys get the deck profiles, combo videos, all that good stuff. Product openings, vlogs, everything right here on the channel. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to stay tuned in for more. So thank you guys all for watching. And with that, thank you all signing out. Peace.